Welcome to the Vulkan workshop part 3. Let's first take a quick look at the solutions to the tasks of part 2. I think they can be best viewed in code. The solutions are contained in the source code of part 3. A hundred images are loaded from file and stored in buffers. Then, 300 command buffers are prepared. 100 for copying each one of the loaded images into a swap chain image, and all of this per swap chain image, totaling to 300 prepared command buffers. There is also some small animation logic implemented, switching to another image every 16.6 milliseconds. And finally, the right command buffer for the right image for the right swap chain image is selected and used in the VKQ submit. The tasks for part 3 are as follows. Right now, the code is using wait idle to synchronize the host with the device every frame. Clearly, we cannot accept such behavior in a real-time application. Remove the wait idle call and first see what happens. If nothing bad happens, like the application crashes, at least the validation layer should inform you that there is something not right. Resources are used in parallel, which causes problems. What we would like to achieve is to produce up to three frames concurrently. We call this three frames in flight and handle all the required resources for that properly. Some of the resources are the semaphores. Do not create and destroy them every frame, but make them reusable. For three frames in flight, Make sure to create three semaphores of each type and synchronize host and device. Let's take a look at it visually. This is the current situation. A frame is rendered and then we are waiting for the device to become idle. This makes resource handling easy. But it does not utilize the GPU in full. We can do better. If we remove the wait idle call, something else happens that is also pretty bad. A situation develops where we are not synchronizing CPU and GPU work at all and we just keep submitting work batches. Looking at the code, this would look somewhat like follows. We can acquire next image KHR is called, which requests an image. As soon as the image has been acquired, the semaphore is signaled and VKQ submit which waits on that semaphore submits a batch of work. The image is rendered into and upon completion the second semaphore is signaled. That ends the wait in VK present KHR sends the image representation engine and immediately continues in the render loop to start the whole process again without any host device synchronization. And again, without any wait, the next loop iteration performs the same actions. And again. At some point, resources will be used concurrently and race conditions will occur. What we would like to achieve is the following. We would like to define the number of frames that are processed concurrently and introduce host device synchronization to avoid race conditions and keep the host and the device in sync. Fences are a great tool for achieving such host device synchronization. Before frame 3 renders, it must wait before frame 0 has finished and its resources can be reused. The same goes for frames 1 and 4 in this example. And for frames 2 and 5. That's it for this video. I wish you good luck with implementing the tasks of part 3.